Hey folks, and welcome back. Or if this is your first time joining us, then just welcome. So today I want to uh, take these two leashes that we made in the last episode and head back over to where the nearest sheep are. Well, actually not the nearest sheep, but almost the nearest sheep. Uh, so we can finally uh, start domesticating and get some wool. Um, but before we do that, one little bit of housekeeping I want to do here is... I want to do something about this grain we have. We have a bunch of maize here. <clears throat> so what do I need here? Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we want our maize to last as long as possible. Now, if you look at it right now, it's only going to last nine days uh, on the cob. So the first thing, we'll keep one of those. And we'll take the rest of these and we will turn them into grain. Okay. And let's get all this grain combined. I'm not sure why it splits it up like that, but it does. Okay, so now we have maize grain and you'll see it lasts a lot longer. 77 days in this form. So given the choice between the two, we would want to turn into grain. But there are other possibilities as well. Um... I think I need to do this with two of them. Yeah, two of them. So let's come over here to our quern. Put some grain in there and let's grind them up. So now if we have a look at the flower here, let's get this out of the way. Uh, the flower lasts longer than the, than the, you know, raw grain did on the cob, the corn on the cob did, um, but much less than the grain did. Uh, so the flower lasts 38 days compared to 77, basically double for the, uh, for the grain. All right. So next step, I need a... All right, take this flour and a bucket and we get two dough. Okay. And take that dough and let's cook it up. That wasn't what I wanted. I hit, uh, there was some grass growing in front of me, so when I clicked with the log in hand, instead of hitting the chest, I hit the grass so it placed the log. Okay, put that in there. Start it cooking. And while that cooks, we can have a look. And you see the dough will last for seven days. So that's even less than the original raw grain, right? And so there we go. We have our loaf so once we bake in a loaf that'll last 27 days so you know nine so the worst is the dough form which makes sense you know wet dough sitting there it's going to get moldy and go bad uh next worst is just the raw grain or, or i don't know what you call it the raw harvest or something um uh next up actually these are both this no they're not Okay, uh, the cornbread will last, for, as bread, it lasts for about 27 days, as flour, 38 days, and the winner is as grain, 76 days. And the other thing that's nice about that is grain is the form we need it in to feed to the animals as well. So it's great to just convert all of it to grain. <clears throat> I'll actually do it here. Do, do, do. Where's my knife? There's my knife. Convert all of it to grain, and then we can use it either to feed to the animals or to make bread out of for ourselves. Um, where's the... Uh, there it is. Grab the rest of this stuff. Stuff, that's the technical name for it. Okay, and... 
free up the green. And then let's just combine it all so it all has the same date. Come on. I'm not sure why it does this all the time. It's very annoying that it doesn't just put them all together the first time you ask it to. Okay, I've got a bit too many vessels on me here. Um, I guess the other thing I should do, it's probably too late, eh, out here? Yeah. But the other thing I should do is cook that up. So I'll, I'll cook that up and turn this into bread since that'll allow them to last longer. Well, actually, that flour will last longer as is, so let's just leave it as flour then. Yeah, actually, I do need this. And we'll put the grain and the flour in there. And we'll do that with all of our grains once they start harvesting. All of our grain crops is, uh, we'll turn them into grain and store them that way until we need to use them. Uh, okay, I'll cook up this uh, one remaining one, and then I'll do that off camera, and then come back and we'll head out to find our sheep. See you in a bit. All right, well, I spared you the time rowing over here, but as you can see, we're almost there. If I look at the map, let's just pull out a little bit. Uh, these are the sheep here that I'm going for, and they're not actually the closest sheep to me. These ones over on my starting island here. Oh, it says duck. <laughs> I have an S down accidentally for ducks. Um, these are These sheep are much closer. However... The reason I don't want to pick them up is because I discovered them like in game time over a year ago. And so those sheep are going to be quite old and I'm worried that if I pick them up, they'll be too old to breed. Whereas these guys I just found on a recent exploration. So these guys should still be young enough to be breedable. That's why I'm going after them. And the same with these ones down here. I may come and pick up some more. Actually, there should be enough here for me. All right, so let's get this boat landed. This looks like a good spot here. And the sword is always really good at picking these up. By which I mean it's fast. Not that they hop into your inventory any better. Okay, let's see what's up here. Oh, I immediately see there is there are two tigers there. Alright, so let's... Uh, Let's not go in this direction. Let's come over here a bit. Um, we can make our way up here. And just make this a little easier for the sheep when we come back later. Ooh. I see a bush. I see a berry bush. What's this? Looks, what is it? What is it? Oh, Garnierite. Yeah, we found some somewhere else, but there's more of it here, and we're going to be needing that in the not-too-distant future. So let me quickly mark that. Meanwhile, let's grab this bush. There's just so much, you know, just so much to do every time we go out. All right. Oh, rabbits. Uh, where are those sheep? This is pretty crowded here. Uh, let's go on the big map. A little easier to see. So a little bit further to the right. Oh, it's those sheep right there. Okay. That's good. Take the boat out of there. Actually, I guess I just could have left the boat behind. Since I'm going to be coming back this way. All right. There's those tigers over there. Um, looks like some hyenas or something up there. <clears throat> Wishes animals. Oh, here's something else. It's nice. Rice. So which is actually already ripe. For the taking, but I'll grab the seeds from these guys. Anyway. Uh, and let's get that into a vessel right away. Oh, actually, wait a minute. We already know 
that if we chop the chaff off and turn it into grain, it'll last longer. Yeah, that's better. Now we'll put it in our vessel. Okay, onward. Less than 100 meters away. How many things want to kill me between here and there? Oh, don't see anything. I think I can survive the ducks. They're killer ducks. The killer rabbit from Monty Python the Holy Grail. So we're going to have killer ducks. And there's our sheep. Well, before I get too caught up in the sheep, let's just scan the area for predators. That's just a pheasant. Another pheasant. Some goats. Okay, looks good. Okay, there's a male. So let's go grab him right now. There we go. That's one down. And now let's find ourselves a female. Before she wanders off. There we go. Looks like they were actively trying to avoid me. They didn't used to do that, did they? I mean, if, you know, if you attack them, they would. But I don't think before... Deer would. Deer would always run away. But I didn't think the uh, livestock did. Oops. Oh, stay clear of the holes so the sheep aren't inclined to jump down them. They are not the brightest of animals. The rabbits seem to be the worst. It's like whenever I'm in an area with rabbits and hills, is I'm continually hearing little thuds and whee! as the rabbits f jump to their doom. I mean, I guess it means I get some free, uh, you guys okay? I guess that means I get free rabbit meat and fur, but the furs are tiny. And so is the meat, so it's really not worth it. Okay. So I want to be careful to avoid though not get close enough that those guys get triggered. So I think what I'm gonna do is come down here. Yeah. Listen for the sound of dying rabbits. Oh, not today. No, oh, see, there goes one. <laughs> see what I mean? Did he die? I can't tell. Yeah, the only thing with the with using the leads is if you get too far ahead of them, leads will snap. I, you know the. They won't actually break. They're still usable, but they will come loose and fall to the ground. And so then the sheep will wander off, and if you're not careful, you might lose the leash. You won't just in the sense that you might have trouble finding it again. Okay, back to the coast we go. Um, ah, see, there we go. I went too fast for this guy here. Where's the leash? There it is. Okay, got him again. Yes, that was an example of show, don't tell. I was showing you what not to do. All right. And this is the area I cleared off over here. Should be able to come down. And I still have both my charges with me. That's excellent. Now we'll come out here to the furthest point. Okay. And now I want to turn around completely. Because I do the boat, if I go forward at full speed, that will be enough to break the leads. But if I go backwards, 
I don't have to monitor my speed at all. This speed is perfect. I mean, I guess in theory it might be possible to move a little bit faster and not lose the leads, but this is plenty fast enough and the leads, I never get so far ahead of the sheep that the leads break. It does involve traveling blind, you know, backwards, but uh, that's what the mini-map is for in the upper left. Would help if it was daylight, of course, but well, that's why we're getting the sheep. So that we can sleep through the night. Oh, yes, I'll have a bed in my house. And then I'll make a traveling bed to carry around with me so that, I, so that you guys don't have to be squinting into the darkness while I'm trying to hunt for stuff. And then, so I don't have to be squinting in the darkness while I hunt for stuff either. It'll take a few days though, right? Just like with the goats. I think it only took three days with the goats. It might have been four. But so it's not too bad. Three or four days. And then... Yeah, and then we'll be able to shear them. You notice how the boat disappeared? I've noticed that before when I'm doing stuff in the boat sometimes, is it just kind of snaps out of existence and back. There used to be a lot of weird problems with boats. I haven't noticed them before, noticed them recently, but this is just in general, and not just in TFC, but in... Minecraft in general, is boats would get out of sync. Let's check the big map, see where we are. Oh yeah, I need to go much further west. Okay. Oh no, I'm going, I have to remember I'm facing backwards, so I need to go a little bit more north so I don't hit this peninsula. Okay, so I need to go more in this direction. Oops, turning that way. Uh, the boats would get out of sync. And so, you know, you take your boat up and land it, and then you try and pick it up, and you wouldn't even be able to hit it. You'd swing at it, and nothing would happen. Save the game out, come back in, and your boat would be out in the middle of the ocean. And it was because the server and the client were getting out of sync as to where they thought the boat was. Okay, where am I trying to go to here? Still further north. Okay. This is not going to be too much more interesting. Oh, some pigs there. Huh. You guys will be on my list soon. Actually, cows are next. That's what I, I want to pick up after the sheep. There's some cows. Anyway, so I'll uh, bring you back in when I get these guys close to land. See you then. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> That's the sound of the uh, lily pads being taken up. So I guess it's time to turn around. Oh, yeah. It is indeed time to turn around. All right. Okay, hop out. All right, guys, come on over to your new home. Oh, haven't lost either yet. Yeah, so bring, carrying animals across the water by boat is slow and tedious, but it's still... Beats the heck out of doing it by swimming. Alright. I see them, boys. Alright, let's get out of here. Take these up so wandering passing wolves don't find their way into the pen. And then let's go get them fed. Shame about the pumpkins. It would be nice to have some long-term long-term lights. Okay, it's not the far he wants a green. I only need two. Actually, it doesn't matter where that goes, I suppose. Okay. Head on back over here. Okay. Alright, guys. 
There we go. That's the first day. And what's the date for today? Today's date is the 6th of June. Okay. So that means if it is four day, just four days, then by the 2nd of July, they should be uh, acclimated. Oh yeah, something else. Um, you'll see when I watch down by my hot bar when I roll over the water jug it says salt water jug that's because I took a swig from the jug while I was out in the water and my cursor happened to be over ocean so the jug emptied out and then on the next clock tick it picked up salt water so you can't there's no way to just dump it out and I don't want to drink it so I'm thinking what I might be able to do is, um, let's have a look at these barrels. Okay. Let's unseal this barrel. Take it up with an axe. Since it was unsealed, it will now be empty. So we can put the barrel back down and I think now I can put the water into it yes there we go okay and it's still unsealed so boom pick it up and so far that's the only way I found this is actually the first time I've tried that but that's the only way I found so far to get salt water out of your jug other than drinking it but it seems to work so I will refill this but I'll do that off camera I don't think that's ready yet. And we do have some fruit popping up here. Oh yeah, there's that other bush I picked up. Another winter green. I think I already have one winter green. Yeah, right here. Oh, this is winter green as well. Oh, no, it isn't. Okay. Oh, that's strawberry. That's right. So winter green, winter green. We need to start a winter green patch somewhere. Let's... Let's... Keep it tidy, keep everything nice and aligned. Yeah, that'll do. So we have berries here. Oh, we have two berries here. I think that's the last of the gooseberry harvest. I'll hang on to them a little bit anyway. I think we nope, no berries here. Nothing here. Nothing nothing here. Nothing here, but we do have blueberries here. Okay, I'm just going to throw them into a uh, into a vessel. Will they fit in this one? Uh, I'll keep a separate vessel for the fruit. I, I'm, I've already eaten two gooseberries off those bushes, and I think you only get two rounds. Except I, I think that happened last year, right? Is I got more than two rounds of berries off of the bushes. So we'll see. But if I can get two more gooseberries, then I can make some more uh, alcohol. Otherwise, I'm stuck waiting for one of these fruit trees to come in. Which, given that it's midsummer, early summer, still early summer, but still not that far off, I guess. But I'm impatient. Okay, um, so I'm probably... Oh, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to go back and get two more sheep. I won't put you through the uh, tedium of watching me do that and get them fed up. And then we'll just kind of fast forward through the next couple of days until the sheep are acclimated and I'm able to snip them. Actually, let's just double check to make sure that that's not something I can do already. Oh, there they are. Shears. Did I put... Don't put the boat away because I'm about to use it. I should plant the rice. Oh, rice grain. Right. Start to get to be lots of housekeeping. I actually, I guess it's because I'm kind of anal retentive, but I, I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like, you know, that there's all these little things you can do after a while, you know, seeing to the animals and, you know, Replenishing the fluids in your barrels and processing leather and all that. Um, snips. Yes, we have snips here. Shears. But I'm pretty sure it'll tell me that we're not familiar enough. Whee. So. Yep. Yep, low familiarity. Okay. That's what I expected. 
Okay, so I'll get two more sheep and then I guess I'll bring you back for the feedings just so you can keep in step with me on those. All right, back in a bit. Well, this is annoying. All of the remaining sheep over here are males. See this guy here? He's got horns. He's a male. This guy here? He's got horns. He's a male. This one over here? He's got horns. Well, I've looked around and I haven't, don't see any others anywhere. Which is a little frustrating. But that just means I'll have to go and find one of these other sheep. 441 away for those. 250 for those. Where are the nearest ones actually? Yeah, it's going to be those ones there. So I'm going to head over there and uh, grab those guys. Try to grab those guys instead. How much you want to bet it's a female donkey though? All right, so I'll bring you back in when when I've got two two another pair of uh, sheep of different genders, different sexes rather. All right, see you then. Okay, my little beauties, come on in. Boom and boom. There we go. Took me a full day to get those. It's that second pair back. And it wasn't until I was halfway back I realized I should have brought another ewe. I should have brought back two ewes instead of a ram and an ewe. Because the uh, the one ram I already have can can breed with all three of the ewes eventually. Alright, let's get some food for these guys. Actually, I'm going to leave the green. I have some rice green here, three there, and one there. All right, let's give them the rice green. Then. like nobody's watching which given my uh, viewership figures is pretty much the case here no I shouldn't say that you guys aren't nobodies and there we go that's the four of them all done and what's the date June 8th yeah, so probably, so if I got it right, two more days and the first pair will be ready to be shared. And then a day after that, the uh, the second pair will be. Nothing on my cherry tree. Any more berries on any of these guys? Doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay, um, what was the other thing? Oh, we should make a loon. Boards. Oak, maple, roll, sequoia. Well, given that the Douglas fir farm is in full force, ha, what alliteration. I think I'll use fir. And I got enough sticks, so. Okay, and I think it goes something like this. There we go. A loom. Uh, where's a good place for it? Here. And I fed them already. Okay, so I will just... What's the time anyway? When did I feed them? Basically, <laughs> around midnight. Okay, so I'm going to just cool my heels and do some odds and ends off camera until next time to feed them. So I'll bring you in for each of the feedings, and we'll see just how many it takes before we can shear them. So, so bring you back then. So here's something. Uh, 
If you've got an unsealed barrel sitting out in the rain, you can see it filling up with the rainwater. <laughs> kind of cool. But it's faster to use a bucket. So I'm going to go uh, finish it off. Well, our... Uh, I guess I can't call it experimental forest anymore since we've done the experiment and found it worked. But anyway, our compact forest, our little mini forest here, is come in. So I'm going to uh, collect a bunch of saplings and sticks from it. And then I'm going to bring them all down. And now for everybody's favorite part, TFC Tree Dominoes. Boom goes the dynamite. Oh, stick over here. Oh, the rain stopped. That's nice. Oh, when I'm full up. All right. Still not time to uh, feed the animals yet. Wait till it's around midnight. I'll try doing them a little bit ahead of time just to see whether, you know, there's a window that you can push back bit by bit. Oops. All right, but I will bring you back once time. Okay, it's basically 2200 on June 28th. So let's see if we can feed them yet. Yep. So it doesn't have to be 24 hours. That's good. That'll speed things up. I can push it back a bit each day. And... So I'm not doing it in the middle of the night. Okay, I'll bring you back tomorrow when we're ready to do more. Okay, so these are my potatoes here. I'm still waiting for to be able to feed the sheep again. And potatoes are one of the easiest ones to tell when they're ripe because they actually look a little bit like squash when they're younger. Um, but when they get these white flowers, these white, you know, cross-shaped flowers, uh, then the potatoes are ready. And the nice thing about potatoes is that uh, they can also be used to make alcohol. So what's in here? Fresh water. I've only got... Well, let's see what happens. Let's unseal them. Oh, it says it'll make vodka. Let's see how much it makes. Because my understanding is I, every four potatoes will give me 1,000 millibuckets. So I should only get 2,000 millibuckets of vodka. Now it says in the uh, in the wiki that the result is controlled by how much grain or potato or uh, sugar you can also use to make alcohol, sugar cane. Uh, how much it's controlled by how much of that is, not how much water there is. So I suspect what that means is that when this finally comes vodka, the level will drop down to two thousand mil buckets. But it will be interesting to see. And. Speaking of sugar cane, I found some that was ripe. I was able to harvest with a sword. I, since I didn't have my clippers on me, I thought I'd try a sword and it did work. I found some, this was on the, my previous uh, journey when I was looking for the jute. So let's turn some of, oops, need to unseal it. So let's turn some of that into sugar. And see how that works out. Okay. And do I still have the shears on me? I'll just put them in here. There they are. So this should be way too early, but we'll find out. It's like just nine in the morning so it's only like 11 hours 10 hours 
wait a minute, it's 10 o'clock, it was 10 o'clock in the evening, so it's 12 hours since I last fed them, so I don't think I can feed them yet. Oh, but. All right, let's see though. Ooh, yes, I can shear them. Not him yet. Oh, yep, yeah, him too. Okay, so it doesn't have to be once a day. It looks like every 12 hours I can feed them. That's cool. All right. Well then, let's go put that loom to use. I can't remember if it's eight or 16 that I need. Oh, I have to spin it first. Right, 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 right. Didn't I make one of those? Oh, I haven't made one yet. Oh, no, there it is. Yes, I did make one. I thought I did. A spindle head. We put it on a stick. It turns into a spindle. Oh, we have scads of yarn. Look at all the yarn we have. 64. And we ended up using 16. Um... Stick that out, and then I think I have to just hold down the rightmost button. And you can see up at the top here that there's a crisscross pattern working its way down. So you just have to keep holding down on the rightmost button until it works its way all the way down. Wait a minute, what the hell happened there? Uh, it popped off into my... Ah, uh, but I get it back. Good. The So the wool cloth that I'd made came off, went into the slot that I had the empty hand on, and then immediately it put it back on the loom. I don't even know what that means. Putting cloth on the loom? We'll have to look that up. I'm not familiar with that. All right, let's make another one. I'll probably fast forward through this for you guys. And that is three. Okay. Um, boards, boards. I don't have three of anything. <laughs> Isn't it always the way? Okay, let's just grab a bunch of these. Three of those. And I have a bed! I finally have a bed! Oh, there's even an achievement for it. How lovely. Uh, I'm not sure where to put the bed, though. I don't really want to put it right beside this this mine shaft. I might I might have an un unpleasant wake up. So let's uh, let's put it here instead. And we can start filling up our former water pit with. Uh, and it should tell me I can't sleep yet. You can only sleep at night, but yay, I finally have a bed. Ah, so that's going to make things a little bit better. So that means there will be less video at in the middle of the night. So in the middle of the virtual night, of course. So I hope you had fun and I uh, hope to see you back for the next one. Bye now.